for our purposes, the important thing that we have to understand about the external ear is its uh, ability to increase the magnitude of the sound stimulus. But selectively, the magnitude of sound coming in at the speech frequencies. And to understand that, we're going to look at a little video. Okay, so what that video showed you is that if you just blow air through, uh, through open air, it, it, you don't hear it. But if you blow it through a tube, and the length of that tube is very important, that you can get a sound. And the reason you get a sound is because of what's called constructive interference. So constructive interference gives you a sound. Now, at the, 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 um, the, the frequency of that sound depends on the length of the tube. So the longer the, the tube, the, uh, the, the, the lower, the, the, lower the, the frequency, and the shorter the tube, the higher the frequency. One really easy way to remember that is that a piccolo, which has a very high pitch, is a very short instrument. Whereas a, say, double bassoon, which has a very low pitch, or a tuba, low pitch, these are very long elaborate instruments that wrap back and forth. The speech, uh, the frequencies involved in speech are constructively, uh, they go through constructive interference so that the amount, the amplitude of speech sounds at the tympanic membrane is greater than it is in the air. So if I do this, or if I speak into my uh, ear, I'm actually increasing the amplitude of that vibration by the time I get to the tympanic membrane, which is fantastic because we're about to lose uh, we're about to lose amplitude. So we want to get it as big as possible before we lose amplitude. Now, th this constructive interference is the reason why that young boy was hearing the ocean in the, in the uh, seashell. And you don't need a seashell. Just do this. Take a paper roll and hold it up. And you'll hear stuff. And what you're hearing is constructive interference from just bouncing air molecules that are going through this tube. All right? And if it was shorter, I'd hear them at a slightly higher pitch. Um, coupled with the constructive interference for frequencies in the speech range is destructive interference, so canceling, a lowering of the magnitude for sounds that are outside of uh, the, the, the speech um, range. So for example, if, if I'm at a restaurant, what my external ear is doing for me is it's already increasing the amplitude of the sounds of, my, of the people I'm, I'm dining with and decreasing the amplitude of sounds such as the, the in, uh, forks and knives hitting the flake plate or people um, placing glasses down on the on the um, on the table so it is it is already putting us in a great position to understand speech okay so the upshot of this is is that after when we get from from airborne sounds that go through the external ear are going to have a greater amplitude at the tympanic membrane before they enter into the amplitude sucking uh, chamber of the middle ear, which we're gonna talk about next.